Good morning. Welcome to Morning Psalms and Prayer. It is Wednesday, September 30th. Can you believe we are to September 30th already? But we are marching through the year and we're marching through the Psalter. Let us go to prayer as we pray another prayer from Hughes Elephant Old's book, Leading in Prayer, a prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Lord and creator of every wondrous light of heaven, grant to us that light-giving spirit to understand your precepts, that we may meditate on all your works, the judgments, the victories, the captivities, the redemptions, and catch the reflection of your loving kindness in every rising sun, in crystal frost and snow, in summer night, in glowing sea. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, we are finishing up Psalm 78 today. Yesterday we read verses 21 through 55. Today we're starting with verse 56. And let me look here. It goes through verse 72. So we begin this psalm today at verse 56. Hear the word of the Lord. Yet they tested and rebelled against the Most High God and did not keep his testimonies, but turned away and acted treacherously like their fathers. They twisted like a deceitful bow. For they provoked him to anger with their high places. They moved him to jealousy with their idols. When God heard, he was full of wrath, and he utterly rejected Israel. He forsook his dwelling at Shiloh, the tent where he, he dwelt among mankind, and delivered his power to captivity, his glory to the hand of the foe. He gave his people over to the sword and vented his wrath on his heritage. Fire devoured their young men, and their young women had no marriage song. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awoke as from sleep, like a strong man shouting because of wine. And he put his adversaries to rout. He put them to everlasting shame. He rejected the tent of Joseph. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loves. He built his sanctuary like the high heavens, like the earth, which he has founded forever. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the nursing ewes, he brought him to shepherd Jacob, his people, Israel, his inheritance, with upright heart. He shepherded them and guided them with his skillful hand. As we have been looking at this psalm, what have we seen this week so far? That it's telling the story of how God is faithful to his people, yet his people turn away. And we have this again. That's how this starts up here again. Yet they tested and rebelled against the Most High God and did not keep his testimonies. We saw that God had been faithful but what did the people do? We see here in verse 56, they reject him again. And as it says in verse 57, they turned away and acted treacherously. And notice this language here, like their fathers. Uh, this has happened before. This isn't something new. It seems to be this, this roller coaster ride that the people of Israel are on. And we see in verse 58, for they provoked him to anger with their high places. They moved him to jealousy, jealousy with their idols. Now, this is important for us to remember. Because when the Bible talks about the things that the people did that angered God, yes, they were morally bankrupt in, in many ways. But often that was connected, and probably more than often, usually that was connected with the idolatry that was going on, the paganism that was going on. We don't talk about it very much, but the things that went on in these uh, pagan rituals, these, these worship things are, are not things that we would talk about in polite society. Let's just, let's just put it that way. Uh, there's always a deep connection between idolatry and paganism and sexual immorality. And that, that goes on into our day with paganism. It's, it's the same thing over and over. And so what, what started this immorality was was their rejection of God as God, as lawgiver. And that leads to all these other things that we, we assume are going on. And so, uh, again, the, the reason I say assume is, is this psalm doesn't give us the details and we don't know all the details. But when the people reject God, it isn't just that they're misbehaving and disobeying the commandments. They have accepted another view of the world and that has led to their immorality. I hope that, I hope that, that is making sense for you. And we see that with ourselves too. You know, yes, we have immorality in our lives that happens. We are sinners. But ultimately, what do we do? We keep our, we keep our foundation set. We, we acknowledge that, that our sinfulness is against who God is. But so much of the uh, worldliness that we see rejects God as who he is. And the immorality is 
flows out of that. Now, of course, following that immorality can lead to those things. But generally speaking, the change in our worldview is going to be foundational to how things happen. Well, this angered God. We, we see this. We understand this. This has been the story that we've seen in this psalm multiple times. Not going to rehearse that too much. Instead, I want to rehearse huh, the faithfulness of God. I want to go back to that instead. Look at what it says here. Now, obviously, this psalm is pretty high on David. Uh, here in verse 70, he chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepholds. Uh, in other words, David was chosen a servant. He took him from low uh, a low upbringing. He wasn't of royal stock by the world's standards, but came from the sheepfolds. And, and again, this is the story of David, right? Uh, he doesn't fit in. Yes, he's in the messianic line, but he's not the firstborn. He's not the one who is expected to be king. He comes from the lowest origins. And, and we see this throughout, throughout the Old Testament. You know, in our sermon series right now, we're in Abraham. Well, the firstborn of, of Abraham is rejected for, for many reasons, but um, he is rejected. And the secondborn, the one through Sarah, is the one who's going to be the one through whom the covenant promise goes. And we have that story again with Jacob and Esau. Esau should be, but it's Jacob. Uh, there's always something going on in the story of God that is pointing us to how things are unexpected that we don't expect things to happen, or we don't expect things to happen the way God does them. He takes the lowly, the ones who aren't supposed to be the ones who are, who are leading to this, and he makes them great. And so we see here that David went from following nursing news to now being a shepherd of the people of God. And that is what God does. He takes the lowly and, and brings them up. And we see here what it says about with upright heart, he shepherded them and guided them with his skillful hand. The expectation here is that David is a faithful servant who is going to show the people how to live and how to follow God correctly, not to follow after the Baals and the Asherah and all of these, these pagan uh, sources of worship. Instead, God is going to shepherd them with his, or God is going to shepherd them through David and they will be faithful. Now we know that story falls off the rails. Uh, and so what do we do with this Psalm? What do we do with this Psalm? Well, for us, we have to read the Psalms with a messianic understanding. Who is a servant like David for us? Well, Jesus Christ is. He is of the line of David. He is the ultimate king. He is the one who truly shows us how to follow. And his people are brought in. They are shepherded into his fold. And he keeps them with his skillful hand. And so for us, as we read this psalm, we obviously read the history of Israel. But we cannot forget that the history of Israel does something so much greater than just telling us a story. It points us to the covenant faithfulness of God in Jesus Christ. And so may we remember our king, the one who shepherds us, and may we be faithful. May our worldview be rooted in our understanding of who God is and his faithfulness, not in uh, the worldly things that can lead us astray, a worldly understanding of who God is, but instead may our understanding of who God is be rooted in Christ and rooted in scripture so that we can faithfully follow our shepherd today and every day. Let us go to prayer. Triune God, we praise and thank you, O God, for who you are and what you have done. You are our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Apart from you, we have nothing and no hope of salvation. And so we stand in awe of you and how much you love your people. Today, we lift up to you all of the missionaries that our congregation supports around the world and in our own country. We pray that you would embolden them with the message of the gospel and that their faithful proclamation would go forth to those that you have sent them to. And today we remember Hope Harbor and Marshall. We pray for their ministry staff and those young people who are under their care. Bless them and keep them and give them healing and strength. We trust that your spirit is at work there through the proclamation of the word. And so we ask that you would embolden that proclamation, that more may hear and believe the good news. As we begin this day, we ask that you would strengthen our trust in you. Many options will be before us today but we ask that through your word and spirit, we would turn to you alone. Build us up in faithfulness that we might be a people that is holy and set apart before you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have yourself a very good Wednesday. Take care.